Hi guys, in this session we're going to be covering um, complex numbers and some basic introduction to it. Let's get started. So to get an idea of complex numbers, we're going to start off with the discriminant first. So remember how we had um, three situations with the discriminant, where the, if the discriminant was greater than zero, then we had equal to zero or less than zero. So if the discriminant was greater than zero, we know that it meant there were two real roots. If it was equal to zero, then we know it was one real root. And if it was less than zero, it should be no real roots. Okay, um, just to ref refresh your memory, I'm just going to show you guys an example first. Let's say I want to find the roots for this particular quadratic equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the values of a, which is 1, b, which is 1, and c, which equals also 1. Now what I'm going to try and do is put this in the quadratic formula. Um, so x is equal to negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Substituting all the values in. Just going to go through this real quickly. As you can see right here, we have square root of negative 3, right there. Now, this is where we can't, I mean, this is where we stop and we can't actually carry on any further because the discriminant is less than 0. So, to break this, what we're going to do is um, split up the square root of negative 3 as this. So here, what we're going to do is split the square root of negative 3 as square root of 3 times square root of negative 1. And this is where we get started with complex numbers. So with complex numbers, what we're going to do is where the square root of negative 1 is, we're going to call this i. Which means if we square this, we would get i squared equals negative 1. Now this is just the basic idea of it. Um, let's see, we can just keep going on. Now guys, complex numbers can be represented in the complex, um, in a complex plane. Uh, it kind of works very similar to just normal planes, but um, just, uh, just hold on, uh, just hear me out, and uh, let's see if this actually makes sense. So these numbers here, they're still going to be normal because that's 1, 2, 3. Uh, however, the y-axis, we're going to have 1i, we're going to have 2i, and 3i. Now the x-axis is called the real axis and the y-axis is called the imaginary axis. So let's have a look at an example here. So what if I put, let's say I put a dot here, right there. This is 3 on the x-axis and 2i on the y-axis. Therefore this number, the way it's written is 3 plus 2i where 3 is the real part of the number and the 2i is the imaginary part of the number. So, complex numbers generally are written in this format of z equals x plus yi, where x tends to be the real part of z and y tends to be the imaginary part of z. And it's written in these two notations here. Again, guys, don't stress too much if you're not getting the hang of this yet because um, once you start doing the addition and subtraction and things like that, it'll start making sense. You almost treat the i like, uh, just like another variable, but the only thing is you have to remember is i squared equals negative 1. All right, let's have a look at a couple of examples just to get a hang of this first. Okay, here's, here's an example. If you have x plus 2i equals 3 plus yi, and if I want to find out what those two values are, then what I do know is that x is the real part of the number and 3 is also the real part of the number, which means x must equal 3. Now 2i is the imaginary part of the number and yi is the imaginary part of the number, which means y must equal to 2. Okay, so this is matching up uh, real parts and imaginary parts. Okay, let's have a look at a slightly different type of question. 
like this one here. If I was to say 2x plus y plus 2i equals 4 plus 3i, then what I do know is that the 2x is the real part. And in the complex number, 4 is the real part, which means 2x must equal 4, which means x is equal to 2. And of course, the imaginary part, which is y plus 2i, should equal 3i, which means y plus 2 should equal 3, which means in this case, y is equal to 1. Alright guys, um, that's just some of the very basics of complex numbers, just getting the head around it. But don't get too stressed out if you don't understand much in this video, because um, hopefully as you start doing addition and multiplication, things will, will start making sense. All right, that's all from the session. Thanks for watching.